And we are live, everybody. Congratulations. You made it through the week. It's Friday. Pull up a chair, get your favorite beverage, take a deep breath. Ah, think back on all the things you accomplished this week in the world of quality assurance and food safety. Glad you're here. My name is Brian Armentrout, and I'm with the Food Leadership Group. And every Friday, if you're new, we do the food safety chat, and we get together at 8 a.m. Mountain, 10 a.m. Eastern, and I bring on amazing guests to talk about food safety. And one of the things that you'll notice with this, too, is this is not a lecture. This is not a webinar where we're sitting here rah, 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 and going through the slides and telling you what you need to do. This is meant to be an interactive conversation. And what you'll find is we have amazing people who join hopefully every week, but of course things come up and we have a contribution to this. So Cara is here in beautiful Wisconsin. Cara is, does a great job with Chem Station and Cara's a guest on here every now and then too. And she is super cool. And I'm very happy to have him because I'm going to get some recon on this too. Uh, two amazing guests. So Jill and Tia with Catalyst. How are you guys doing today? Good morning. We are Good morning, guys. Happy to be here with you in the audience. We are. We are. <laughs> and I am so jealous because you, you guys got to go to the Food Safety Summit. My, I think it's probably one of my favorite conferences. And you guys got to go and tons of pictures on LinkedIn with all kinds of people that you got to see and say hi to. So any, yeah. any feedback on the conference before we dive in here or how was it? Well, you know, we were lucky we got to meet Kara in person because we've been seeing her and we email her. We've been chatting, but like it's always so awesome to be able to like finally meet people that virtually we've all been connected to. So yes. That was fantastic. Yeah, Very. with people that have the same passions, right? Yeah. And that's that's great to just be in that space and be able to nerd out and talk uh -huh. about things that <laughs> other people might be like, okay, okay. But we're like, we are passionate about this. Um, how do we make other people just as passionate? So and support their great passion. To be mm -hmm. Yeah, and and yeah, that's a really good point, Tia, because I mean that's kind of the, that's kind of the fuel of of what it is that we need to do because. A lot of times, right, we're sitting in our office in a plant or corporate or whatever, and we kind of feel like it's us against the world. Mm -hmm. And these yeah. conferences, I think, help to remind us that that's not true, right? There's all kinds yeah. of people out there who are kindred spirits, and we want to help, right? So that's yeah. yeah. And they have a lot of great ideas, and they're doing a lot of great work. So that's always fun to catch up and, and find out, like, what are you seeing in you know, just being a catalyst, right? We're here to solve pain points. So mm -hmm. just to even hear like what pain points are out there and how cultures are changing and like, that's always fun. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of times, yeah, people think they just have to tough it out and, you know, figure mm -hmm. it all out on their own. And if you don't, that's like a sign of weakness or something. And that is just silly, right? That is absolutely right. silly. So don't, don't get caught in that trap in your career. Yeah. Um, so, all right. People are jumping on here. I love this. Sarah, yeah. good morning. Of course, our good friend, morning. Austin. In, in, Hello. In, in, How, Austin. Tammy. Good morning, Tammy. Tammy. Good morning, Tim. Good morning. Oh, Tim, I mean, Robert, I mean, so, and Sarah. I think Robert presented at the Food Safety Summit, didn't he, if I recall? Mm -hmm. I think he was on the agenda. You know, we didn't make it to all the sessions, so. Well, yeah, they kind of did these four things, things now. For that. Yeah. yeah, and there were like uh, four sessions at a at a time, so mm -hmm. you, re you really had to pick and choose. We had the opportunity to jump in and out of some, um, mm -hmm. which was nice. Robert, if you were on the, um, on the agenda, put in the put in the comments which um session some of them were recorded too so if you didn't mm -hmm. get a chance to make it you can also um watch the recording of some of the sessions yeah that's good yeah it's, it's always good when to hear robert talk he's, he's got just so much knowledge in this space he needs a cool guy so it's always good to see him wow. um so before we dive in i was gonna do it so let's 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 see here with our, our three-way screen i'll get my my little uh periodic table mug here cheers <laughs> She has got her <laughs> hotel I coffee my, cup. I'm in a hotel room, so I have my hotel coffee cup. Why is it that we do that, right? It, after we take a drink of something, it's like. <sighs> I don't know, but my one-year-old is starting to make noises like that. So well, it, it's funny I always tease my wife, wife about this too, right? It's like when when you, you know, you give your significant other the oh, a little kiss in the morning goodbye, right? We always make that little noise. <laughs> Why? <laughs> my little one, like we go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. so she goes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> learn from an early age. I hear, learn. 
Oh, but oh, I, 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 I digress. I can yeah, definitely go down some weird topics here. Claire, good morning. Nice to see you. So if you're new to the chat, I mean, so one of the things that we love to do on this, and this is, this is meant to be extremely interactive, as I said before. Uh, hey, Jim. Um, <laughs> he's like, oh, my goodness, you guys getting around. But yeah, just sorry. Oh, really? No, no rest, rest for the wicked. And I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it at that. Um, but one of the things that we emphasize, and I, I think Jill and Tia with Food Safety Cows do an amazing job of coaching and putting together uh, boot camps and these type of things, is um, there's the technical skills of what we do, uh, microbiology, chemistry, all of these type of things, standards, all of these requirements, all these knowledge bases that we get. And we put all these letters after our names, PCQI and all these type of things. And, you know, it fills up our entire screen on LinkedIn. But and I, I think that's why these chats are so important is to help remind people in this space that the technical skills are 100 percent important. Mm -hmm. But you also well, maybe and is better. And, and. and you need to have people skills, too. Because if you're a bull in a china shop and you're running around your company pointing fingers at people going, you need to do this, and I tell you to do this because I'm in charge of, you're going to have an extremely frustrating career. No. Yeah. You know, and lately, one of the questions I've been posing out on LinkedIn is how many degrees or certificates do you have for food safety and quality yeah. or something in the technical area? Now, how many degrees or certificates do you have for leadership? Like right. just to help bring some awareness, like what, it, where are we when it comes to stepping into these new skill sets, roles, perspectives, Yeah, we're all talking about food safety culture. And we certainly heard it a lot at food safety summit as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if we're using the same, it's the old, what's the actual code, right? The insanity one. If we're using the same skill <laughs> today to get where we want to be tomorrow, not going to be there. It's not going to happen. Yeah. That was one of the message at food safety summit is, how are we still seeing the same things that we saw, you know, 30 years ago, 50 yeah. years ago, 10 years ago? Uh, and a lot of times we're trying to use the same tools to get to a different spot. And we know like those tools got us to where we needed to go. And then now we're trying to push farther. Right. And so we have to really use different tools. We have to do things differently. Yeah. 100%. And uh, Austin is, you know, I can hear him in my ear right now. He doesn't even have to say it in the chat knowledge does not equal behavior just oh, because somebody yeah. knows something doesn't mean they're going to do it. Absolutely. No. That's yeah, why we, that's why we focus on coaching, right? Yeah. Because that role between knowing and doing that road is rocky and long. And mm -hmm. when we think about, you know, we partner really well with training programs because training is needed. It's there, right? That's like, knowing something, right? You get trained, now you know it. But in order to get someone to do it, right, that human behavior, that's a road. That's not going to happen just because you, you've you been trained. It, it's not going to happen just because you've been trained 30 times. Think, I mean, we, we've been in facilities, right? And it's like, man, I do this training every six months. Why are we still having this issue? And yeah. what we found is that coaching really does help people get this internal motivation so that they are really coming up with their own solutions in the way they want to do work. And if you, if you know human behaviors, right, you know that if you are internally motivated, you are more likely to stay that course because this is exactly who you are and exactly what you want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Good analogy. I was thinking here to Tia is exercise, right? So if mm -hmm. we kind of leave it to ourselves, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of tired today. It's cold outside, yeah, right? Your, your brain can come up with a million different excuses of why not mm -hmm. to go to the gym. Yeah. But if you've got a coach who is there and you're paying, you're paying some good money for this person to be there and work with you and help you and train you, that external motivation sometimes will give you that extra kick in the pants that you need too. But again, mm -hmm. it's all you, right? It all mm -hmm. comes back to you. Oh, yeah. And I think that's a, that's a really good segue into what we're talking about today is uh, we, we all remember, and maybe I'm dating myself on this, but you know, back with David Letterman, when he had his show and these type of things, he had his top 10 lists, you know, he'd bring on a celebrity mm -hmm. or something and they would bring their top 10 list. And so as we were preparing for this chat, we're like, well, let's kind of let's kind of have some fun with this here today and talk about 
kind of those top 10 landmines, those things out there from a development mm-hmm. side that people tend to step on over and over again. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. as everybody knows, you know, landmines, they're hidden. Right? They're yeah. just sitting there. You don't know where they're at. And you're just hoping with that next step, you're not, you're not going to step on it and it blows up in your face. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a really good analogy for these top 10 landmines because these things, right, they can, you know, they sneak up on you and you don't even know they're mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as, as we kind of go through these and we segue into the top 10, one of the, this is something that I learned painfully on early in my career. And I'm curious to get your take on this as well is a lot of times people are like, well, you know, it's not really my job to develop my career. That's, that's HR's job. That that's what the, they're there for in the company. Mm-hmm. I think if you're waiting on that, I think we all know, right. If you're waiting for someone else, whether it's HR, your boss, um, a mentor, someone to, sh- to help you get there, it won't happen. Right. And they can be mm-hmm. there as support to give you direction and help you with other things, or maybe, offer some new perspectives and kind of challenge you to be curious and explore. But at the end of the day, like you've got to own it. Mm-hmm. You have to own where you want to go. And it doesn't always mean it has to be like, here are the five steps I'm taking, but we're going to talk about in the top 10, like why that's actually even powerful to do. Cause yeah. isn't it right. You plan to, uh, I'm horrible with quotes today. The whole plan to succeed or, you know, without a plan, whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> plan to fail, fail to plan. That. Right, whatever right, that right, one right. is. I'm glad you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, <laughs> the bottom line is, and a lot of people don't recognize this, is HR is just like you in the company. They are there for a specific reason and a specific function, and they're being paid by the company. And they are there to protect the company. Mm-hmm. Right. To make sure that things are going smoothly and that there's no things out there from a, you know, using the landmine analogy. There's nothing out right. there for a company landmine right. where you've got some jerk manager who's sexually harassing everybody and oh. causing a giant lawsuit and yeah. just make everybody's life terrible. They're there to prevent those things. And uh, that's why those trainings are there. And there's nobody sitting in HR going, you know, I, I would really like to see Tia advance here. I'm going to put together a plan for her. Right. No, they they right. don't have time for that. That you need yeah. to go to them and say, here's the type yeah. of thing. And- yeah, I like how you said too, like they don't have time for that. And we mm-hmm. all are working and overworked, right? Um, and, you know, I was having this conversation, I can't remember with who, but it was a couple of months ago around um, just HR and, you know, they have this, um, this piece around retention. We were talking about retention. Mm -hmm. And I was actually talking to someone in HR and they were saying that like, it's hard for us to focus on retention when we have so many other things to do. Like retention is a small piece of their, of their very large role, this person in their organization. Um, and, And, you know, one thing that they were saying is that it is, it's hard to focus there because that really is a full time job, especially as you're going against a culture that needs to shift. Yeah. So it's important to know that about every function. Right. So that just like Jill said, like you're not going to get there if you're waiting on someone else because they're also trying to figure out themselves. Right? right. Like you have to take you have to stand in your own power and you have to explore and learn. Like, what is it that you want to do next? What is it that you want to grow in? Um, and that's those are the type of things that we explore with coaching, because you you have to be aware of where you are and where you want to go so that you can go get it. Yes. And, you know, for my HR friends out there who are like, we care about people, right? The caveat that mm-hmm. it's not that they don't care about people. We know they do. And we know that there's some HR teams that have really been more progressive on how they support with either retention or even looking at internal development. Yeah. But I think Tia, you bring that point that you bring up is there's so many other things that draw their attention away that they aren't the ones who are going to be there kind of pushing the rope to be like, hey, what do you have next? What's going to happen from a real meaningful way, right? It may happen from kind of, um, you know how we are. It's the transactional checklist. Yep. Yep. Brian's got a, a, um, a development plan. Tia's got a development plan. Check, check, check. Whether we do it or not, or how, how progressive it is or how focused it is. That's not often part of that plan. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And so part of this kind of comes down to 
we've all been in this boat. We, we've had fantastic bosses and we've had bosses who are not really that good. Right? <laughs> and if you happen to be working for a boss who's a great boss and supports you and does all these things to help you and mentor you, fantastic, right? That person can accelerate your growth in your career. Those don't happen that often. I, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to have some of those people, but I've also had the other side too. And yeah. either way, it still comes down to you. And mm -hmm. here's a little tip for, for managers out there and something I used to do. So whenever I would put together the annual plan for my teams, I would always have in the budget training for each of those people. And I would say, okay, we have X dollars in the training budget for you. Research what you would like to take. Now, you can't go and take an equestrian horsing racing. No, no, it has to be it has to be something relative to your job. And then come back to me and tell me what you would like to do. And every time I've done that, I, I've been fantastically surprised with what they come back with. It's like, you know, I, I need to take some you know leadership courses. I need to learn more about I need to get certified in foreign supplier verification or things like this. And they'd be like, I, I I don't even think I can remember a time when someone came to me with their training plan and said, I had to say, mm, no, that's no, no, try again. Um, and people surprise you, right? And, and just giving people that autonomy to say, okay, what are you thinking? And how would you like to develop? Because a lot of times too, in what we do, there's other career paths people can take. They may be in quality now, but maybe they want to go to operations. Maybe they want to work in the engineering group. Maybe they want to work in project management. That's fine. Right. And, those relationships that you develop and those skill sets that you help those people, you're, you're not going to lose those connections, right? It, it, right. You don't yeah. care, you know, hold everybody, you know, and Absolutely. speaking of quotes, right? It's kind of like that. Um, I think it's might have been Steve Jobs. I don't know. It was like, you know, what if we train people and they leave? And then right. the response back is, yeah. what, what if we don't train them and they stay? Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think we all know the answer to that. Yeah, yeah. we do. We do. <laughs> We do. Yeah. And one thing, Brian, too, is like as you talk about that um, and just because this is the space that we're in, you know, as a leader and and as we think about, like, how do we take care of our people and how do we help them with their leadership development? You know, we one thing that we really look at and we talk with organizations and leaders on is that, you know, we have a comprehensive you know, leadership development plan. And so as you think about your people and their growth and what they need um, and how do they explore those needs, right? Our program is is built for that because we know that um, sometimes as a leader, you're like, I don't know, I don't know what people need, right? I don't know where we are. Um, and I want people to go out and, and search. And sometimes we find that, yep, they find these little courses around, but they're really not growing or they're really not doing anything d differently. Right. Um, or th because we see that a lot of times the training, the training, right. It doesn't really relate to what they do every day. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one thing that we, that we struggled with during our, um, our careers is that we set through leadership training and we think about it and we're like, Hmm. Yeah. I mean, those are really great points. And maybe one day I'll be able to, to do those things, but how do I do it right now as a quality engineer? How do I do it right now as a project manager? How do I do it right now where if I tell them to go do it and try to hold them accountable, it's not going to mean anything because there's no reporting relationship. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important and something that we saw just as a, as a gap that's needed. And we wish that we had, right. Is just a, a, development plan that is comprehensive that as I grow as a leader, there's something there to help me um, mm -hmm. and be relatable to the work that I'm doing. Uh, very good point. And I, I, I'll keep the um, the uh, personal trainer analogy going here because it's stuck in my brain <laughs> is yeah, if you have a goal of being more fit, right? That that's too vague. What does that mean exactly? And so, let's say yourself, you're a guy, and you're like, you know, I want I want super strong arms, or I'm going to go and work out my arms all the time, right? I'm going to have these gigantic arms, and they're going to look amazing, and you know, everybody's going to go. And you don't do anything else, right? It, it, and you've got these these skinny little third legs, and you know, have you seen this? Yeah, we've all yeah. seen that. Yeah, you're, they're completely out of proportion. And all of that work that they did wasn't balanced. You need to have a balanced approach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And figuring out that long-term approach. So what are these different tools in this toolkit that I need? And that kind of segued into what we wanted to talk about here today. 
And at the end, I'll explain a little bit more about something that I learned around this called a talent stack. So we'll, we'll use that as, as a teaser here toward the end. So with the expertise you guys have in, in your in your business and what you're helping to coach people, one of the things that we put together here, and this is the Letterman thing, right? So yeah, I hit your paper, oh. right? Is the, the top 10 list, the top 10 landmines that are out there from a development side that people need to avoid. And so the first one we came up on this list, which I think is the huge one, and we've been kind of talking about, right, is, is blind spots. So what, what, what's a blind spot? Well, it's like the dude you just talked about at the gym doesn't even realize I might need balance in other areas. Like yeah. I'm so focused on his arms and, you know, sun's out, guns out type thing that, you know, they, they don't realize that like, well, we also see your calves and those could use a little work. Need a little work. <laughs> so that I think is, those are the blind spots. And of mm -hmm. course the challenge with that is we don't know when we don't know. Right. So that's of course why it's called a blind spot. Blind spot. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the amazing part of it too, right? Is when we meet someone new and we never interacted with them before is human beings were social animals and we try and figure things out. Is this, is this person, you know, going back to caveman days, is this, yeah. per, is this person a threat? Are they going to be cooperative? What's, what's going on here? We are hardwired to assess that person and it's automatic. And that happens. I think they said, and Austin may have some more information on this in the chat as well, is within the first minute, right? We have already decided our impression of that person. Yeah. Yep. Is this person articulate? Is this person intelligent? Is this, you know, all these types of things. And there's these activities that we do that we're unaware of that people see immediately. And we have no freaking idea. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and we just finished a boot camp cohort. And here's, we had somebody come out and they're like, I didn't realize, I mean, like, we know relationships are important, but uh -huh. they're like, I didn't realize being so intentional on building and leaning into the personal side of relationships would be so important and critical for my success in this role. Oh, and that's a blind um, spot because we think okay. we're doing pretty good. We're nice people. We talk, mm -hmm. but yet being intentional, like that was a total blind spot for this person to think about how to bring that in differently. Yeah. yeah. Amazing to well, see well, them afterwards say, wow, people come to me now. People mm -hmm. are sharing more things with me. Like I had a roadblock with trying to do this collaboration with another team and now it's flowing. Yeah. Well, well I, let me build on that. So think think if you have this internal, and this, this happens a lot with technical people, you have this internal rule in your mind that says work is for work. Right. And if oh, I need yeah. something done, I need to get it done. And I'll go talk with people and get it done. And you follow that rule. And you go to other people and you're like, Jill, I need this done. I need this done. I need this done. <laughs> and you walk away. And the other person's like, oh, okay, right. You're going to develop that pattern with people, and whenever they mm -hmm. see you coming, they're going to be like, "Oh God, what is going like, oh, on?" Yeah, that way. yeah right. exactly, exactly. Yeah, all, all Brian brings to me is more work, and whenever I ask for him to do things, it's like I don't have time for that, right? Yeah, that's not going to work very long. No, it's not, and it, it's about those relationships, building safe spaces, mm -hmm. right? Like that is that's important, and you know, some people think that they are doing that. Right. Like I, I'm coming to work. I'm being myself at work. But then, you know, this is why coaching is so important is because it really makes you more self-aware and you yeah. start to realize, oh, I'm trying to leave a little bit of myself out. But it shows up. You cannot be a different person at work, yeah. no matter how hard you try. Mm -hmm. People, they might not know exactly what it is, but they know that something is not right with this right. person, right? And, it, and it's because you are trying to hold a little bit of yourself out um, because you don't want that personal there. But we always say, you know, we talk about it in, in boot camp. It doesn't mean that you need to spill everything about your life and all of your secrets. And, you know, you can definitely have a life outside of work, right? That's different than at work, but you have to be authentic to who you are, yeah, mm -hmm. right? And, and people feel when you're not. And I think yeah, that's yeah, one of those that's... blind spots, right? With us oh. being technical into being better leaders. I always say there are many, many, many great leaders out there in the technical space, but there's also so much room for us to be better collectively. Yeah. yeah. So. And yeah, I mean, there's there's tons of interpersonal rules out there. We hear this all the time. 
oh, he's just putting a fake face on, you know, or something like that. And if, if you're going and talking with people at corporate and you're checking off your list, okay, I've got 15 minutes this morning to be interpersonal with other people. Let me check that off my to-do list. Okay. And I come over, I'm like, hey, Tia, how are you doing today? How's the family? How's your significant other? How's your children? Okay, see you later. <laughs> right. What was, what was that? What was that? <laughs> right. um, I mean, even, even things like, you know, what's... All right, who who is Joe married to? What what's you know what's that person? What's going on in her life, right? Because yeah. all those type of things impact too. Um, are are there illnesses going on? Are there other? We all are people, and we all have things going on, and we have up and downs. Yeah. And trying to put on that fake work face, mm-hmm. and oh my God, people will see that through that immediately. They immediately. they do. You know, people want to know what you care about, right? Mm-hmm. Like they want to know what you care about outside of work. They want to know what you care about at work. They want to know what you care about with your career. Even think about the people um, that you have, and you're in. In people are like, man, they really just care about their career, and like they want to move up, up the ladder, right? And they may, they may not. I don't know, but have a conversation. But you know, for people that say, you know what, I want to be promoted. I really want to be promoted, and I'm working on those skills to be a director at at my organization. Now mm-hmm. people know you've been open and honest and people now know those are the type of projects you're looking for. You're working on your skills. You're doing all these things. Right. And people are more likely to help you because they know you care. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a natural human characteristic to reciprocate. Mm-hmm. So if you do something for somebody, it's like, here you go. Right. And there's no it, there's an internal obligation that's built. Now, if you go to them and say, hey, Joe, I'm going to do this for you. And I expect you to do something for me in the future. When I no, Right. Don't don't be a dick. Right. No, what, what are you doing? That, that's not proper human behavior. And you know that. Right. You people know. That. I mean, to your point, yeah, I think it's a really good one. Right. Is Don't act differently at work than you act outside. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's just crazy. Right. So with that blind spot piece of it, the only way you're going to learn that is through other people. Mm-hmm. And if you're a jerk and you treat people, they're not going to tell you. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. They're going to let you sink. And then exactly. you're going to have no idea why. Even if you ask for feedback, right? Like, you know, one of the things we talk about in boot camp is um, giving and receiving. And one of the things you talk a lot about in boot camp is how do you ask for feedback? Yeah. Because so often, you know, we kind of ask on the fly, but it's really about being intentional to yeah. ask for feedback in a very intentional way. Yeah. So that way you really create that safe space for people to come back to. Yeah. You've been asking yeah. something as simple of your team members, right? Not in a group setting, one on one, when you in a in a casual situation, say, How can I support you better? Ooh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That opens okay. it up, right? Well, right. well, and all of this kind of flows into the second line of mine, which is like realize not really realizing this starts with you and it's your mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All of this is around the mindset that I want to be intentional, that I want to have more self-awareness because these blind spots do exist. Right. But how do I source from within? How do I dig deep? Because we are all we are all good people out here doing good work. Yeah. But we've also had all of these life experiences and we've had things placed on us, right? All the like, you should do that. You should do that. All the obligations. Uh Sometimes we need to peel back those layers to say what's still fitting for me so that Uh I can develop into who I need to be and where I want to go. And and that's brand line number one, right? It's you. It's you. That's you. And when we talk about like mindset and we've all heard growth mindset, right? If you're in this growth mindset, you are looking for those blind spots, right? You're looking for what do I need to learn? Where do I need to grow? What do I need to do differently? What do I need to add to my toolbox? And, you know, that will help you discover what those blind spots are because yeah. you're, you're, you you want to know, right? Because you want to grow. And that really starts with you. People are not going to come out and tell you your blind spots just randomly, right? You have to be curious. Right. You have to be curious curious and lean in and be, what if I do this different? And right. We've had people, that's what, see, we will always share boot camp stories, right? This is what, even going back to the relationship ship one where people were curious enough to try something new and go, wow, like people interact with me completely different than they did last week. 
Yeah. Right. So we've only been practicing this for a week and they can already see a difference on how they're approachable or not. But that's mm-hmm. all mindset and growth mindset. It is. It starts with you and we all have the ability to change through our yeah. entire life. Right. If, yeah. if, if you lose that mindset and you think that not nah, I'm who I am and this is if, if other people don't like it. Right. And we hear these sayings. Right. They just don't they just don't like it because I'm being real. Um, yeah. OK. Yeah. If you think that's no, no that's, that's not, not really being real. Right. No, <laughs> they can't handle the truth. Right. And what's interesting in this conversation is, is, this is not a um, a movie. Right. Who is that? You no. can handle the truth that Tom Cruise movie. So sorry. Yeah, <laughs> as we're talking about this, just think about all of the cliches that are just being randomly inserted into this conversation, because there's a million different phrases that are out there for people mm-hmm. trying to identify these activities and traits that people have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And we, we interject those in as shorthand and we all know what that means. I mean, so that movie with Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise, what was that? A few good, what was that? A few good men or what was something, it? Something like, yeah. Right. That, how old is that movie? Right. And, and we all picture in our heads the super intense, angry Jack Nicholson with his teeth. <laughs> right. <laughs> so and, true. You know, it's just like, whoa. OK. And we all know that. Um, mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Right. And so I, I think, right. So, so number one, right. Was looking at my list here is not realizing that it starts with you in that mind shit, the mindset. Number two, which is naturally woven into this conversation is not building relationships. Right. And mm-hmm. we've been talking about this from mm-hmm. the very beginning of, the, of our conversation here so far. Yeah. Um, and we see this error all the time with, with technical people. Yeah. Um, th- this is, this is what is true. This is what is right. Everybody else should see this. Yeah, it's self obvious. Go do it, right? Right. And yeah, the, the the visualization I use on this, right, is I call this Moses coming down from the mountaintop, right? We we create a process or a procedure in our office on our own, mm-hmm. and we mm-hmm. come down from the mountaintop, written on tablets, and we give our knowledge to the people. And right. Everybody goes, yeah, well, yeah, right. And <laughs> right. it never works, right? It, 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 works. it doesn't. It it does not work. You know, we are humans right we're built we talked about it we're built on those social react um relationships and we crave relationships right and we lean on relationships and your relationships is really the foundation for trust and safe spaces and influence and getting things done you know without a relationship it's hard to have a tough conversation Mm -hmm. right it's hard to solve big problems if Mm -hmm. no one knows you If no one knows what type of leader you are, what type of person you are, it's really hard um, to be in those spaces, right? And to have those conversations or to be able to influence. So if you're not leaders, our job is to lead people. And so often what we find, right, I've done it too, where my to-do list is bigger than the list that I'm doing to support my team. And up here, I think that they're kind they're related that by doing these things, I'm helping my team, but I haven't created space to have conversations mm-hmm. besides yeah. the work things. Mm-hmm. I think it'll just come. And then it's all based on this work goal versus I care about you. Let me learn more about you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. And it, it all comes back to this too. And, and part of this, and this goes into landmine number three, mm-hmm. is we tend to think of things what we, what we don't have. Right. And so, yeah, yeah, like Tim says here, nobody likes leg day when you're working out, right? Well, we don't have, <laughs> and but we forget what we're good at, right? Yeah. So take inventory, take stock. Landmine number three, you fail to recognize your gifts. Yes. We're all good at certain things. Yeah, we and, are. We are. And, you know, so often because of just the way things are structured, people will go, well, for me to move into a manager role, I have to do this, this, and this, even though I really don't like people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If that's not where your gifts are, then how can you be curious and explore what other pathways may be the right direction for you? Yeah. And we all have different different gifts, and everyone on our teams deserve to be developed into those gifts. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's like just the untapped potential. Seventy four percent of people say they have they don't have the right resources at work, so they have untapped potential just sitting there to mm-hmm. bring the work. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, we, yeah, we've talked about this on the chat before is 
Uh, one of the rules that are a subset of this is you need to understand what you're good at and what mm -hmm. you're not too good at yeah. and your team, right? Don't hire everybody who's like you. Oh, I love these I, analytical yes. engineering types. I'm going to have a whole team of analytical engineers. Good luck getting stuff done. Right. right. You, you need a blend, right? You, you need people with really good people skills and technical skills and interpersonal. Yeah. Yeah, all of these things interact. And I, I was kind of thinking about this myself as we're talking about number three with these gifts. And what's funny is this gets back to the blind spot thing too, ladies, yeah. is I'm really good at organizing. And, and putting things in structures, right? Which is why I've been attracted to in my career, quality and systems. And you know, I was on the SQF Technical Advisory Council and these type of things. And I was laughing to myself as we're kind of thinking about this here this morning, because one of my clients, it, it came up uh, where I was talking with a, a, the project manager. And he said, well, one of the things, Brian, that you're really good at, I admire, is your organizational skill. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, right? It becomes evident to people yeah. as well, what you're good at. And mm -hmm. conversely, one of the things that this is kind of a weird thing, too, I'm curious to get your comments on this, is, um, OK, I'm not good at this. Therefore, I'm going to put all my energy into the thing I don't like. Oh, yeah. You yeah. You your facial everything. expressions on that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's one of the reasons why I really love Strength Finders is because mm -hmm. under the whole concept of understanding where your strengths lie and really focusing on your strengths Right. And even relating that to where you want to go like that is that's to me, like when I first heard that, it just made so much sense. Right. Because it, it was almost like a shift from, you know, look at your opportunities and how do you continue to develop your opportunities? And you're just really focused there. And sometimes it's like, I really don't like doing those things. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But when you shift your mind again, your mindset, when you really shift to. I want to discover the things that I love to do and the things that I am strong at and how that can help me help others. Then you're like in this spot of like where you really recognize your gifts and your talents and what that means to other people. And ultimately mm -hmm. the world, like we're in food safety, right? Like we're in the work that we do directly impacts the public. Yeah. And so it, being able to use our gifts and our talents to do that and really lean there, like we need that. We need that to protect the public. We need that um, so that our public can freely eat food. We do our best work and we're most engaged when we're working in our gifts. Yes. That applies right. everywhere except the gym. I'm going to caveat that. Yeah. Like they, then you better be doing more legs. All right, that's that's true. Right. Come on, Tim, get on those legs, man. Come on. Um, <laughs> And, and, and will you, will you, I mean, so what's interesting about this conversation as well, right, is how these things, and, and Jill, your point was super important on this too, right, is we're, 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 we're who we are and we're the same person at home as we are at work. Don't, don't fake it. Now it's the same on the personal side and, and right, here's another cliche. Uh, the couple gets married and one of the spouses said, well, you know, yeah, they have some problems and things like this, but I'll fix them. Right. <laughs> Everybody goes, mm -hmm. are you now? Okay, how long is that marriage going to last? <laughs> no, people aren't going to change. No, people are people, right? And, and the only person that can change right, and make that decision to change is yourself. And you have to recognize that and your gifts. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number four. Move out and see your name screen here. There we go. Number four is settling. Settling for less. Yep. Mm -hmm. Settling for less than you deserve or are worthy of. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's big. It is because we see people who are like, well, this is where I fit and this works well enough. But like, if you have gifts, you don't need to, I mean, we all have gifts. Don't mm -hmm. settle for less. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes exactly. we feel that, or, you know, whether it's organizationally or that we have these boundaries and often it's us letting ourselves have permission to get out of the box and giving ourselves permission to, to recognize our own worth. Absolutely. And that's not, that's not easy. Right. And it's not, it's, it's not that it's not scary. Right. And it does take bravery, but mm -hmm. imagine, imagine if you were really using your true gifts to the highest potential, right? Like we're happy or we're excited. We're passionate. We're doing all, we're really making a difference and settling for less, like, you're not giving the world everything that we need, right? Right, right. right. And then, I mean, think about this. 
I mean, it's a good point to you. Think about the, think about who you were when you were in your twenties and versus now, right? Completely different people. Um, we grow and we change. And part of this too, is we tend not to see that. We think of ourselves as this static monolith and what we are right now is what we, no, I was an idiot in my, my twenties, right? You look back and you're like, Oh, look at the things I did. I, you know, you know, uh, you're like crazy, you know, Oh, I can tell stories, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, and here, here's a weird little, little factoid. Did you know that pretty much about every seven years, every single cell in your body is replaced? You're mm -hmm. not even the same person you were seven years ago. Physically, you're a completely different right. person. Um, have you ever seen these little, the videos they have online? This is, this is really cool. You, you think your bones, your bones stay the same. Nope. No, there are no. osteoclasts and osteoblasts, these little cells that are going around, mm -hmm. chomp, 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 breaking down cells. Another ones are coming in and laying new ones. It's mm -hmm. constant. Constant. Okay. Yeah. I mean, We're yeah. meant to, like we we are it's happening physically, right? And even in our our brains, right? Like mm -hmm. we are meant to grow. We're meant to do things differently. We're meant to learn and change, Play right? Play big. Yeah. That's what we're meant to do. Play big. We, mm -hmm, we were yeah. brought here for, for nothing. We all were brought here to play big and, and live our pur purpose. And that purpose thing is something we can talk about because that does change as we recognize different things and awareness right. as we, Absolutely. as we do right. things. But yeah, exactly. And, and so it, it's kind of like too, you hear these stories of uh, people have brain injury of some type and then they come out of this issue and they recover and recuperate and they're a completely different person mm -hmm. and their brain's been rewired. Yeah. 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 Fascinating. Stuff. It, it's yeah. kind of like, I don't, so I like, it's completely not related to what I do or anything else, but I've always loved it. And it's astronomy, right? It's just amazing. Right. And so every now and then I'll, I'll post stuff that, that's interesting to me on LinkedIn on astronomy and people, you know, if you're really, you know, type, it's like, why, why is he posting astronomy? No, right. this is super cool stuff. And this is, this is part of, who we are and mm -hmm. learning and expanding knowledge. And, and I think that's one of those definitions, right, of intelligence is being able to connect disparate knowledge that's completely unrelated, right? And, and you know, it's like uh, Newton and the apple or things like this, right? Being able to make those connections is how things move forward. And so the more you can increase your knowledge base, yeah, it helps. It's amazing how these things yeah. work. Mm -hmm. um, and number five, moving on to number five. So... We talked about this a little bit earlier, but I'm glad we have these all numbered out because number five is thinking you got to do it on your own. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Oh. Yep. I thought that and I didn't go far. <laughs> no. Right? Because, because we're not, like, you have to do things and it's got to be you. But until you start recognizing that we are all here to support each other, that's mm -hmm. when you go far. It's, it's that yes. cliche, right? Alone, you only do this, but together you go far. Right. right. Yeah. And, and, it yeah. applies in your technical, in your own technical leadership development. Mm -hmm. I think and, you can go so far, but without others, you it doesn't go far. So you don't have to do yeah. this alone. Exactly. And this, this is a belief I had early on in my career, and I think it hindered me early on, <laughs> is that if 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 I'm the best at what I do, and I was a microbiologist, I was really good at that. Um, senior management will automatically notice, and they'll promote me. Right. Mm. Yep. No, nope. we, we promote a lot of individualism in this like general society and competition, which keeps us from being able to recognize sometimes that actually we're here to support each other. And for yes. It's yes. good. But when yeah. you're developing, you need others to help you move along the path. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll give a plug here to, to one of our guests here on the Food Safety Chat who comes on every now and then is, is Dr. Marshall from Eurofins extremely intelligent guy, right? He, he He's forgotten more stuff than I've learned. <laughs> but when you talk with him, he doesn't talk down to you. Right, he, yeah. he goes into facilities. He's there to two in the morning helping people solve problems and things like that. He shares his knowledge and he doesn't do it in a condescending way, right? He, he, he adjusts it depending upon who he's talking to. And he can have, you know, PhD level conversations and he can have conversations with the guys on the line. And both of those people walk away saying, wow, yeah, wow, I like him, right? Yeah. That's yeah. how you share information. And as a result of that, and, you know, Doug is in you know high demand. The, the guy is constantly traveling, helping people out, spreading his knowledge, helping to improve food safety because he can do it in a way that's effective. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I mean, I think sometimes we get into this mindset and this is human behavior, right? That there's not enough for everyone. And I need to keep everything to myself because I need to, I need all this information so I can get promoted. And, you know, or I need all this information so I can make more money or I need all this information when in reality, like there's enough for everyone. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to our gifts, right? We each have unique gifts that are different from each other, right? Yeah. And some people need me, some people need Jill, some people need Brian, right? Yeah. And there is enough for everyone. There's enough for everyone. There, in what we do, there's, there's a dramatic, there's not a lot of people who know what we know. And it's a, it's a very uh, small group. It's a small club of people, right? And we have to help each other out because yeah, it's not something that you go to college for and say, you know, oh, I'm going to be an accounting major. Oh, I'm going to be a food safety. You know, no, it, it's like you, we tend to, and I always laugh about this when you have these conversations with people, we tend to fall into what we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. That I, no, I, I, I had a pre-med degree, cellular biology and physiology. I was going to go to medical school and I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. And here I am, right? No, nobody's life is planned out exactly in your late teens, early twenties. So this is my life course. And no, mm -hmm. nobody. nobody, nobody. Yeah. We used to use the hashtag better together all the time, right? Like that's because we really are better together. And this network that we have, right. And even myself, like stepping out into consulting, you know, a couple of years ago and building this network of people, you know, that, you know, you on the call, but then also people that's in the comments, right? Like we're a part of this network and I lean on you all, all the time. We have conversations, you know, we talk like this on, on LinkedIn, right? Um, because it's so important for us to stay connected, right? And truly, you know, step into that being better together. Cause that's really how we're going to move food safety culture, right? Is that we, we're going to do it together. Exactly. 100%, right? And so for number six, and we've been talking about this, and so what's interesting about this conversation is, is there's no particular order of one through 10. These yeah. things are all intertwined. And number six, we've been talking about this entire time, is thinking that just having the technical degree of certificate is the answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or getting another one. Like, oh gosh, I need to be a better leader. I need to go get another degree. Doesn't always mean it's, a, it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But I think when we talk about technical leadership development, will another technical degree help you be a better leader? Right. That's something yeah. that really, you know, I encourage you to think strongly about what, what your objective is to have out of that. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. just like we talked about here, we're all learning from each other. And there yeah. is an incredible network here that we can learn a lot from each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And it, it's kind of... So back in college, do you remember the professional students, right? The the people in their 50s and 60s who were still in college and they had like nine different mm -hmm. degrees <laughs> and all kinds of different fields. And it's like, oh, I love it. Okay, great. But aren't, aren't you really just hiding, right? You, you, mm. You're comfortable in college. You like that environment and you don't want to take the next step. Yeah. Oh, I like that question. Are you hiding? Yeah. Right. Like when you think about, oh, I'm just going to get another technical degree, you know, is it because you don't know or are you are you hiding? Because mm -hmm. leadership is scary. Right. Like we talk about all the time. I've um, I've been reading Renee Brown, Dare to Lead. And so that's like top of mind right now. And a, pe a lot of it is around like, how do you be brave? How do you be a mm -hmm. courageous leader? And the reason why she's asking those questions and talking about it is because leadership is scary, right? Mm -hmm. Like there is a piece, there's some fear there um, that all leaders we feel, but the ones that actually step into leadership, right? They're scared and they do it, right? right. And that's the piece And they're that willing to do it anyways. And, and they're, they're willing, willing to step into it. Anyway. So exactly. Yeah. So and, I, and I love you, that question of, are, yeah. are you hiding? Right. And yeah, you're, you're going to make mistakes and you're, you're going to fall down and you're going to look like an idiot. And guess what? That's when you learn. Yeah, right? absolutely. You learn. Think about yeah. this. As you were talking to you, you're kind of, and this is this is a good example of how we how we you know kind of kick off these thoughts in, in everybody as we're talking about these things. 
is if you're working for a company and you have a CEO, what is her degree? Do you know? I don't. Right? I, there's, a, there's a client I work with a lot and I have no idea, but she's a great leader. Yeah. The, the, the degree does it engineering, chemistry, marketing. I don't know, yeah, but that person has risen to the rank of CEO, not based upon their technical expertise, based upon their leadership skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. 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 And yeah, I think here's the ironic part of this as well, is if you have this false mindset that more degrees equals more expertise and therefore greater career potential, you may actually be shooting yourself in the foot. Because let's say that you've got this string, as, as, as Ryan is saying here in the comments, right? This, this string of an acronyms after your name on LinkedIn. Um, HR and leadership in your company may be looking at you and saying, you know, Brian has all this amazing technical expertise. He's perfect right where he is. Yes. Mm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. You kind of get into, you're kind of in the box then. Yeah, you're in the box. In the box. So, but really focusing on that's why taking your own leadership, your own technical journey, your own development, whether it's technical leader or technical, into your right into your own hands and into your power is so important. Yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Uh, so number seven, you know, I, I see all these type of things, but I, but the opportunity isn't right. I, I'm I'm going to wait a while. Yeah, we're busy with projects at work. I'm not mm -hmm. sure when we're going to fit it in. Yeah, you're waiting for that next right year. Time. Yeah. Waiting for the right time. The right time never comes. Never. Nope. It never. You know, I think it, it's even around like um, what Jill was saying is you get put in a box. Sometimes you're put in a box and you're waiting, but people already see you as being exactly where they feel like you are. Mm -hmm. And so the time is not going to come for someone to pull you up or pull you in another direction because they've already put you in a box. They feel like you're happy because you're right. sitting and you're waiting. Yeah. Right. And it's not a priority. And we understand mm -hmm. through your whole like career, right? There are going to be times where leadership or development is going to be more important and a higher priority than other things. It mm -hmm. ebbs and flows. But if the answer every time is it's not the right time, then it's not a priority ever. Right. And this kind of interacts back with what we were just talking about with that person who's hiding in college, right? Oh, oh, well, you know, I'll get out in the world of work when uh, yeah, it's not right right now. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. wait. It's never going to yeah. happen. Yep. Yes. Number eight, not being aware of what is in your circle of influence. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me more about that one. Yeah. You know, when I think about this and this being a blind spot, you know, we talk about in boot camp around influence, and sometimes we try to influence everything. You know, we kind of talk about it as some people feel like, oh, if you learn how to influence, you will have this magic dust and you'll be <laughs> able to get everyone to say yes to everything. Right. And everyone's going to agree with exactly what you want. But that is not true. Just because you know how to influence doesn't mean that you're going to be able to influence everything and everyone. Yeah. It's important for you to look at where is my circle of influence today? And how do I influence within that circle? And mm -hmm. as you influence, your circle begins to grow, right? Mm -hmm. And as you build relationships, your circle begins to grow. And so right. it's important for you to just do a check on where can I influence, right? Like I might can't influence the CEO because I'm a supervisor and I've never met the CEO, right? But I can influence my team. I can influence yeah. my manager. I can influence my counterparts, you know, as I build relationships with them. Figure out where your circle is so that you can influence there and grow it. I've yeah. seen that be a blind spot, blind spot for many people. Well, and it's really discerning between influencing and collaborating. Mm, yeah. Because I think we, we've we worked with people, we've worked with someone who they're trying to influence everybody around them, like on all parts of the business. But they're really frustrated because not everybody's coming along. Yeah. And so recognizing like, there are these different circles and that's what we work on. Like, where's the place that you can have the most influence right now? Right. It doesn't mean that the other parts aren't important, but it also means sometimes focusing your energy so that you can actually make some of the progress that you want to see. Yeah. Right. And, and, and yeah. don't confuse being a loud mouth with being influential. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I had a person on, on one of my teams in the past who was a quiet, soft-spoken mm -hmm. person who gave a lot of thought to things. 
and people learned, right? This is blind spots again in learning how other people react is when he did say something, right? So if we were in a meeting and, and Brent said, well, you know, I've got a couple of ideas around that. Everybody would go, Whoo. oh, and every time he spoke, it was gold. And so he was able to influence that way. And he, yes. he would use that skill at the correct time, which is yes. very important. Yeah. It is very important. You know, sometimes I think about how um, sometimes the most passionate people are not that influential, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of times they're still, they're being passionate and speaking the same way every time, but it's not catching on. You yeah. know, that person, you know, if you're, if, even if, think about that right now in your role, if you are trying to do something and you've been screaming at the top of your lungs and no one's catching on to it or doing anything different, then Think of how do I influence differently? Am I outside of my circle of influence? You know, right. what, how can I really make a change where I am and then have that ripple effect? You know, reassess, reassess your audience. Yeah. Yeah. And that and, oh, yeah. We don't even necessarily know, right, how we, this, this chat right now, right? We don't necessarily know. We see these beautiful people who are in the chat with us. But this then is on LinkedIn and other people are watching it. We have a gentleman here in the chat from Pakistan, Ali. And how is he going to be able to take this information in, in influence in Pakistan on the other side of the globe? Right? Yes. We don't know. We don't know. Absolutely. Um, wow, we're getting low on time here. Oh, this well, is the last couple. Right? And I, I think it goes into number nine, right? Which is passion. Passion for what you do. Anybody who watches this knows that the three of us, we care about. We're not doing this to get a paycheck, right? We're, yeah. we're doing this because this is this is our life's ambition. This is what we found. And this is like, this is us, right? This is part of who we are. And you can't fake that, right? You have to be passionate about what you do. Yeah, yeah. you do. Yeah, about because it's a journey and we get that there's going to be times where we're going to like not love our journey. We may mm -hmm. not even like the journey sometimes. But I think those are also signs for you to really pause and go, am I leaning into my gifts? Mm -hmm. Am I really bringing my whole self to work? Yeah. It, those are sometimes times for us to pause and either validate we are and we and reignite that passion and be the catalyst, like we like to say. Yeah. Or maybe the times that you're like, gosh, I'm going to pivot. Mm -hmm. a, a good indicator of that, and entrepreneurs talk about this a lot. And so I, I've kind of dipped my toe into software development and things like this. And entrepreneurs talk about flow. Mm -hmm. So a good way to identify your passion is if you're doing something and you lose all track of time. And, mm -hmm. and you're just like going, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say. And all of a sudden you look up the clock and you're like, holy crap, I missed lunch, right? That's flow mm -hmm. and that identifies passion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Which all kinds of rolls into landmine number 10 because yeah. the journey is giving you lessons. Yes. Right. Yes. Oh, that's a good one, right? I love that as number 10 because there's no per perfect food safety plan. Right. There's these things are constantly evolving, new Absolutely. threats, new opportunities. Right. Mm -hmm. How many of us were talking about food safety culture five years ago? Right. Maybe indirectly. Right. <laughs> but there was no food safety culture. Right. Right. Title with this. Right. We all knew it was the right thing to do, but it, it kind of coalesced into this vision that we call food safety culture. We all know it was the right thing to do, but it wasn't necessarily um, identified as strongly as we needed it to do. And mm -hmm. There's lessons, right? Good lessons, bad lessons, right? These all come together to, you know, it's who we are, right? And yeah. Five but, years ago, I didn't think Tia and I would be business partners. <laughs> That's but true. The lessons right? along my journey led me to this so that I can lean further into my passion and my gifts. Yeah. So that's the, that is the value of really leaning in on the journey. Yeah. Absolutely. And being open to the fact that you are going to have lessons. Right. Like knowing that on this journey um, and we, we said it a little earlier, you're not going to get everything right. If you are, you're, you're really not playing big. Right. Like right. if you're getting everything right, there is no growth. So mm -hmm. making sure that, yes, I know that I'm that there's going to be stumbling. 
blocks, yeah, right? Like there's mean. going to be, yeah, there's going to be these moments that I'm going to learn some lessons and I need to be open to those so that they're not blind spots and that they don't go yeah. over my head, right? Because right. you need those lessons to become the leader you're going to be in, in the future. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, yeah, a good indicator of passion is how quickly time flies. And we're already at the end of the hour, my goodness. Um, but at the beginning of the of the chat here, I promised a little more information on something that I think is really super valuable. And it's from Scott Adams, the creator of the Dilbert cartoon. He's written a number of books. And he also has on Locals, where I have a, a channel as well on Locals, a group where he talks about different things. And one of the things that he brings up a lot is what he calls a talent stack. Mm -hmm. And it's the idea that there's these different skill sets that you can develop and these things stack on each mm -hmm. other. And you're able then to create this talent stack that is then related to what it is that you want to do. There's only one person who can mm -hmm. tell you to figure that out, and that's you. Yes. So what are those building blocks that you need to stack in order to be successful, right? And so two of the big ones you've identified here is technical skills and personal skills. You need yeah. to develop those stacks. What are the other things that you need to develop within your areas? And taking all this information, because part of this is too, and we talk about this on the chat as well, is if you walk away from this and say, okay, that was kind of interesting information, or whatever, and, and you do nothing with it, right? Do, mm -hmm. do little, you don't need to solve world hunger. Yeah. What's, what's the one thing I'm going to work on next week? What's the yeah. new thing that I'm going to try and develop? Am I going to be successful? Maybe, maybe not. But if you don't try, you got to, you got to try and grow. Right? Well, and this so, is where you don't have to do it alone. Because if you're like, I really do want to be the next best version of myself as a leader, yeah. that, I'm going to plug, shameless plug. That's why Catalyst has this comprehensive leadership development program for technical mm -hmm. people in food. Yep, we absolutely. need help with that part because that's part of the talent stack as you mature in your leadership that like, what are the next skills that help you get to where you want to be? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And and with that, I mean, so perfect segue. I mean, so Jill and Tia are two of the best coaches out there and you see their email here, right? So you can reach me at Jill at foodsafetycatalyst.com and Tia at foodsafetycatalyst.com. Mm -hmm. And my, my website, which is cut off here as well, right? So B. Armin Trout at foodleadershipgroup.com, which is probably the longest email address in the known universe, <laughs> but it, it is what it is. It is. Um, so oh, it's, it, I'm, I'm I'm sad that this chat has to come to an end because this has been such a good one. And and yeah. the participation from the audience. And this is why we do this, right? This is this is yeah. amazing. So thank you everybody for joining us. Because if we're just shouting out into the void with no one to interact with, that's that's not fun either. So you guys make this chat what it is. So thank you to Jill and Tia, my esteemed thank guests. You. Thank you to you in the audience. You guys are amazing. Yes. So continue doing what you're doing. We will see you back here next Friday at the same time. So 8 a.m. Mountain Time, 10 a.m. Eastern for the next Food Safety Chat. We're live on LinkedIn, Facebook, not, not Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. There we go. Those are the three. <laughs> and having you here live makes this so much fun. So thank you, everyone. And thank you to Jill and Tia. So enjoy Oops, your weekend, happy. everybody. Have a great one. And we'll see you back here next week. So thanks, thanks everyone. everyone. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.